And today's video is a general theoretical discussion on the topic of tides. This is only a theoretical video and the tide calculations uh, will be done in separated videos and I'll put them up on my channel. Today's video is uh, only going to discuss the cause of the tides, the different terms and terminology used in the topic of tides as well as the concept of tidal streams and tidal diamonds. So for those of you who don't know what tides are, tides are basically the periodic and vertical rise and fall of sea levels which are caused by the effects of the gravitational forces exerted by the moon and the sun as the rotation of the earth. Mariners are need to have a in-depth knowledge of the tides for planning their passage as well as for safe navigation. So whether it is uh, transiting waters of different depths or whether it is about transiting waters with sufficient under keel clearance and that is clearance below the bottom of the ship or whether transiting under bridge or structures of bridges, uh, mariners need to be able to extract information from the tide tables or from the tidal streams or tidal diamonds and apply that information to their own vessel so that vessel can always safely transit through different passages. All right, so we'll be talking about the different terms and terminologies used with, about, with tides. Now, tidal phenomena are not uh, limited only to the oceans, but they can occur also uh, in um, other systems uh, whenever a gravitational field varies in time and space is present. Uh, for example, the shape of the solid part of the earth is affected slightly by the earth tide, though this is not as easily seen as the water tidal movements. Now, while tides are usually the largest source of short-term sea level fluctuations, sea levels are also subject to forces such as wind and barometric pressure changes, which result in something called storm surges, especially in shallow seas and near coast. Now we've talked about tide tides, um, but in that uh, same aspect, we have the concept of tidal streams, which is the horizontal movement of the water as a result of the rise and fall of the tides. So if tides, you can visualize tides as the vertical rise and fall of water, tidal streams are the horizontal movement of the water as a result of this vertical rise and fall. All right. So um, Tide changes normally occur due to the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun and I'll uh, we'll talk about what are the other factors that affect it as well. So you can see here that uh, the the earth is the, the, the green structure here is the earth, the green circle and that is experiencing a gravitational force from both the moon and the sun. But depending on the position of the moon and the sun, uh, there are tides which are called the spring tides and neap tides and I'll be talking about it in a few minutes as well. All right, so uh, the, because of the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon, uh, the water which is there on the Earth's surface experiences a force and that results in the resulting of tides. So there are basically two types of tides. Uh, if we can, uh, they are commonly known as diurnal tides, which occur once daily. In that you have one high water and one low water. And then you have semi-diurnal tides, which occur twice daily. In this case, you have two high water and two low so the two high water on a given day are typically not the same height and there is a daily inequality in these heights and these are the higher high water and the lower high water in tide tables similarly the two low waters each day in a semi diurnal tide are not of the same height there is a daily inequality and these are the higher low water and the lower low water now the daily inequality in height is not consistent it is generally small when the moon is over the equator. That is because it is affected by the declination of the moon. So you, you can see here on this slide here, I've listed the factors that affect the tides. In that case, the moon's orbital period, uh, the moon's declination causes unequal intervals and heights between successive tides. Now, uh, apart from these, uh, there are other factors. Um, such as land masses, shape of the sea floor, wind, as well as the barometric pressure, which causes uh, or which affects the height of tides. So, tides are uh, vary on time scales ranging from hours to years due to a number of these factors. All right. So let's start talking about now what are the um, spring tides and neap tides. Now there are, there are two types of tides due to the uh, moon and the sun with respect to the earth and in that results in the 
resulting of spring tides and neap tides. All right. So if you see here in this case, uh, spring tides are normally tides of an increased range, which occur during full or new moon, especially when the sun and the moon are both on the same side here. Uh, so approximately twice a month, around new moon and full moon, when the sun, moon, and the earth they are forming a line. Uh, the tidal force due to the sun reinforces that due to the moon. So the tides range in this case is then at its maximum and that's why it's called the spring tide. It is not named after the season uh, but uh, because uh, it is derived from the meaning uh, spring as in jump or burst forth or rise. Uh, all right. Uh, similarly, uh, in case of deep tides, you can see that the neap tides are those tides of a decreased range which occur during the moon's first and the last quarter. So what happens is when the moon is at its first or the third quarter, not the last quarter, first and the third quarter, the sun and the moon are separated by 90 degrees. As you can see on your screens, this separation of 90 degrees is as viewed from the earth. In this case, the solar tidal force partially cancels the moon's tidal force. And at these points in the lunar cycle, the tides range is uh, at its minimum which results in neap tides um, because neap is actually an anglo-saxon word uh, which originates from the meaning uh, without power so spring tides result in high waters that are higher than average and low waters that are lower than average uh, and neap uh, tides result in extreme tidal conditions and uh, there is about a seven day interval between spring tides and neap tides Let's go into some of the basic terms and terminologies that are used in the concept of tides and we'll start with the charted height here uh, which is the height of an object which is usually measured from the mean high water spring. Uh, now what is mean high water spring? Mean high water spring is MHWS is the acronym and mean high water spring is normally the average height of high water uh, at spring tides uh, average throughout the year. All right. And similarly, mean high water neaps, that's MHWN, uh, then becomes the average height of high water at neap tides averaged throughout the year. And then you have, of course, have the present sea level. And then you have MLWN, which stands for mean low water neaps. Uh, this is the average height of low water uh, at neap tides, again, averaged throughout the year. Then you have the mean low water spring uh, or MLWS, which is the average height of low water at spring tides averaged throughout the year. All right. And then we go into the chart datum. Now the chart datum is actually the, if you think about it, it is the level of the water to which all depths and drying heights on the navigational charts are referred to. All right. So the level above which the heights of the tide are given in the tide tables is also the chart datum. And then we come to the right of the screen and we have something called the drying height. Now this drying height is the height uh, measured above the chart datum. And this is of uh, features or uh, land features that are periodically covered and exposed by the rise and fall of the tide. So whenever there is a rise of tide, these structures are actually covered by water. And when there is a fall of tide, you will see the same structures being revealed uh, uh, after the falling of the water. And then we go on to the height of tide. This height of tide is actually measured from the chart datum all the way to the present sea level. That gives you the height of tide. And then uh, we have the charted depth. Uh, the charted depth in this case is the depth below the chart datum. And uh, this is the depth uh, which is indicated on navigational charts. All right, so naturally the present depth of the water then becomes the depth of the water from the present sea level to the bottom of the sea floor. All right, so these are some of the terms. There are some other terms as well, which I don't want to, I didn't want to uh, use too many terms here, but there are other terms called flood tides and ebb tides. And flood tides are the tidal streams on the rising tide and ebb tides are tidal streams on the falling tide. But uh, then we'll not go into that. All right. So let's put into context uh, what we have learned so far in terms of uh, navigation by vessels. Now, first I will discuss uh, uh, and I'll show you the importance of the tide knowledge uh, so that the vessel can safely navigate with sufficient under clearance uh, below the keel. 
all right so in this case you can see the blue wavy line here is basically the water level and from the water level to the we have the maximum depth so in that case from the water level to the keel of the ship which is the bottom of the ship then we have the draft of the vessel so this is the draft of the vessel uh, so as a result from the keel of the ship to the bottom of the sea floor is then the resulting under keel clearance of UKC now uh, different vessels uh, uh, passed with different under keel clearance and this is normally a decision taken by the master now of course all vessels should transit uh, waters with sufficient under keel clearance required for safe navigation but often uh, you will experience that you are transiting channels or narrow passages with uh, low under keel clearance for example uh, we used to transit the pilotage waters of china or shanghai with a very low under keel clearance at times uh, which could be as low as about 50 cm uh, unbelievable but true and uh, many a times uh, this is a executive decision taken jointly by the master of the ship as well as the pilot because in some places the channels are not adequately dredged uh, for deep draft vessels to pass through with large under keel clearance sometimes you have to pass with low under keel clearance but in open waters or open seas naturally you must have sufficient under keel clearance always below the bottom of the ship or below the keel of the ship for safe navigation to take place all right then of course you have the charted depth uh, you know is the depth below the chart datum and this is indicated by the black dotted line here as you can see so naturally that is the uh, black dotted line is and from the chart datum to the bottom of the sea floor then in this case becomes the uh, charted depth all right from the chart to the uh, water level then is the height of the tide required for the vessel to pass with the required under keel clearance as indicated by the UKC arrow. In another a separate context here, uh, this is a case where a vessel needs to pass under a bridge with uh, sufficient clearance from the topmost part of the. Uh, right. So in this case, again, the black dotted line shows datum. From the chart datum, you can see uh, the mean high water spring is the red horizontal line. So mean high water spring, if you remember, is the average height of the high water at spring tides. which is average throughout the year so for any time that the vessel will require to be passing uh, safely under a bridge you also need to know the air draft i'll tell you what air draft is so you can see from the chart datum i would for spring is actually the uh, uh, we need to know this because then you can also uh, the height of the bridge is often given uh, from the chart datum Uh, and the mean high water springs or the mean high water low water neaps as well so if you can calculate the height or if you can find out the height from the mean high water spring uh, to the bridge you will have an idea of uh, how much will the vessel rise to uh, if transiting through the passage. all right so in that case uh, finding out the air draft is also very important for the air draft is the air draft is actually the uh, height from the water level to the topmost part of the ship so that air draft is required it is a very essential value that you should know this value because that will give you an idea of how much clearance you have when passing under the bridge because you can find out the height of the bridge from the water level or from the mean high water spring uh, and then you can uh, subtract the air draft from that height and find out how much clearance you have while passing under the bridge so this is normally uh, an exercise done by uh, the navigation officers once the ship finishes its loading operations and all ballast operations and you are aware of the draft so once you are aware of the draft you can then go into the chart and find out the height of the bridge from the water level or from the mean high water springs and then uh, subtract your uh, air draft from that height and find out how much clearance you will have to pass under the bridge and you must always have sufficient under keel clearance now of course that depends on the time of the transit as well so if uh, during the mean high water spring or mean low water uh, spring uh, or whether it's mean high water neaps or low water neaps uh, depending on the time of the transit you should be applying that height of tide and then doing the calculations so if that height is not sufficient you may advise the pilot or you may advise the port authorities that it is not safe for your vessel to pass through at that particular time but of course if it is safe to pass through Uh, you should be able to uh, inform the pilot that it is safe to pass through and you will take the vessel forward all right so this is uh, putting in context the knowledge of tide streams finally we i'll tell i told you that i'll have a, i'll include a quick discussion on uh, as well and i'll do that as well 
So tidal diamonds, uh, as I have discussed in my previous video, uh, you can see this information is normally available on the charts. It's normally in the in a, in a corner part of the charts, and uh, it's 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 highlighted. It's highlighted, and you can see the tidal diamonds are referring to the and diamond shapes and in which you can see the alphabetical letters of A, B, C, D. It starts with A and can go up to uh, as many number of letters as required. And this uh, tidal diamonds provides you with the tidal information or tidal stream information uh, of uh, geographical area as covered by that navigational chart. So in this, you can see the, uh, the the latitude and longitude of each of these tidal diamonds is provided. Then you have the direction of the tidal streams provided, uh, and then you have the rate of the tidal streams provided under spring and neap. So SP stands for spring and NP stands for neap. And you have that is these rates are hourly rates, and you can see the direction as well. Uh, the the information is provided for six hours before high water and six hours after high water as well as high water. So you can get an idea of how the vessel's course will be affected by the direction and the rate of the uh, tidal streams transiting in that area. All right. So this was a short lecture on theory on tidal theory. I'm going to be putting up a couple of calculation examples. Uh, together with this as well in a separate video and I want you guys to watch uh, all these videos to gain a good understanding of the uh, tides. If there is something you feel that I have not covered, uh, please let me know in the comment section and I will happy to cover that topic as well. This is actually quite a long topic and there are many aspects to this but I didn't want to make it too long and boring for you guys. I covered only the minimum required for you to know for the safe navigation as well as for your exams purposes. All right, so I'll see you soon with my next video which will have calculations involving tides. Uh, all the best with your study guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.